infamous Joel here and this video is going to be a little bit of a change of topic i want to talk about how i went from being a prison inmate making 19 cents an hour to just last month in june i made thirty four thousand dollars online and i'm not making this video to brag whatsoever i'm making this video to both let you more in my world who i am and what i'm all about but also to anybody out there to help them if you're having these doubts, if you're having this kind of, you're stuck in some kind of rut in life and you're thinking, I want to start a business, I want to do something more with my life, but I'm just not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not something enough. And I want to talk specifically to you to hopefully my story kind of get you out of that rut, get you out of that way of thinking. And I want to talk about an old versus new mindset. Because part of becoming wealthy, financially free, all that stuff is really not just doing something new to make more money, but it's a mindset shift you have to go through to become another type of person. And the type of person that I used to be, I used to think that rich people were just lucky or they were born with a silver spoon or they were just better off. They were growing up in different, better neighborhoods, or better parents or something. And that's just not true. Personally, I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was not born with any kind of uh, high privileges. I wasn't born broke uh, or dirt poor or anything either. I thought I was, but as I grew up, I started to realize I was probably better off than most other kids out there who were really messed up, right? So I won't sit here and play a tiny little violin and say that I had I had a horrible time growing up. Of course, I had parents who provided as well as they could. We lived okay. We weren't like middle class. I would say lower middle class. We were okay. We're working blue collar family. My dad and my mom were together, but they had issues, right? My family, we had a lot of alcohol and drugs in the house and things like that. And I grew up around a lot of arguing, a lot of toxicity, and just just a bad environment for a kid to grow up. So I grew up with a lot of anger inside me. I grew up with a lot of depression, a lot of sadness. And what I did was I internalized a lot of that and I started putting that back out into the world, started acting up, started running with the wrong people, started doing a lot of the wrong things. And I ended up getting in trouble a lot when I was younger. And now all of that finally kind of cultivated back in 2012 when I committed a crime so heinous that the judge said, you know what, it's time to put this guy away. I've had enough of slapping him on the wrist and doing all this stuff. I actually attacked some people. I actually, uh, I take responsibility now. At the time, I would say, oh, we got into a fight. But really, I didn't have to start that fight. I'm the one that started it. I'm the one that antagonized the whole thing. And I deserve the time that I got. I ended up getting 30 years, sentenced to 30 years in prison for my actions. And now I, I'm glad it happened. It, I took it as a learning experience. Uh, I'm not glad that it happened in a sense that people got hurt, but I took it as a learning experience and I would not be who I am today if I had not done something so stupid. And I wanna bring that up again, not to play the tiny little violin because I brought that on myself, but I wanna bring that up because if you've done something or if you've gotten yourself in trouble, if you feel like you've hit a wall, if you feel like I've screwed up my life beyond belief, it doesn't matter. I'm here to tell you it really doesn't matter. What really matters is to look at it, reflect on it, and figure out what can I learn from that? What can I get out of that where I can look back and say, you know, if my thinking was different, if I had taken different routes, if I had uh, took other options, it's not about trying to change the past, but rather than trying to change the future, rather trying to say, uh, what is my thinking now and have I evolved from that? Can I do something new? So now for the next seven years, because eventually I had good enough behavior to where the parole board gave me a second chance and allowed me to be released on parole in the middle of my 30 year sentence. This was my home. This is a state correctional institution at Dallas, Pennsylvania, not Texas. Okay. But this was my home sweet home. This is where I live. This is the exact block that I circled. I know the outline. I know every step of this place. Okay. I, I was very, very familiar with it, but this is where I lived. And I lived here for seven years, miles away from my family, miles away from my kids. I hadn't seen them for months, even years at a time at times. And watching them grow up behind bars was a huge life lesson for me. It was a huge smack in the face that I need to do something different. So that's what I mean about I'm kind of glad that things happened the way they did because sometimes you need that wake up call where you need to take 
a different turn at a crossroads and say, you know what? My life can either go down from here and can get worse or it can get better. And I chose for it to get better because I was sick and tired of seeing my kids grow up behind bars or just talking to them on the phone maybe once a week. And so the biggest enlightening kind of wake up uh, experience I had was this inmate actually came over to me, saw my potential, saw I was kind of smart and I was interested in changing things around. He was serving a life sentence. And so he wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. Unfortunately, that's something that just happens. And hopefully we work on that as a society to try to give people second chances more often. But he was a really nice guy and really smart and he had learned a lot. Um, since he was locked up at a really young age and given a life sentence, but he gave me this book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. And he said, if you read this book and you take it seriously and you really internalize it, it can really change your life. And he wanted to give it to me because he was kind of living vicariously through me because he'll never go home. He'll never see his family again or be able to hug them and touch them and be around them. So he saw me as an opportunity for him to get out and him to live the kind of life he wished he could have lived. But Rich Dad Poor Dad is more than just a book about financial advice and things like that. As I read it, I couldn't put it down because it was a book about self-discovery. It's a book about um, really pulling out that potential that you have as a human being to really live a life of abundance instead of scarcity. That was one of my big problems that I, I kind of viewed the world through a, a, the lens of everything being scarce. There's not enough food. There's not enough gas. There's not enough money. There's not enough jobs. Everything's unfair. The government hates me. My parents are the problem. Everything is bad, right? But when you flip that and you look at the world through opportunity, through positivity, through abundance, there's plenty to go around. There's, there's, you can be creative, you can create more abundance for everyone, help people create value. That's what this book is all about. And it helped me so much see the bigger picture of being kind of trapped and enslaved, not just as a prisoner physically, but as a prisoner mentally and emotionally. And so the biggest lesson I think I learned from that book and through my experience in jail because I was part of Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, that had my own substance abuse problems that I had to break out of, is that I needed to break out of prison up here mentally first before I broke out of prison physically. Otherwise, I started noticing that so many people were leaving, getting paroled, getting second chances and coming back. And I noticed the pattern was they weren't prepared mentally. So they weren't out of prison yet mentally. And that's why they they physically came back, if that makes sense. But it's very, very important. It was very important for me to break out of that cycle mentally, the cycle of anger and abuse and and blame and hatred and, and not taking responsibility and and feeling like a victim all the time and the world is just out to get me i needed to break out of that that was my own personal mental prison and it might be yours too and i want to tell you that it's okay to have that but first th the first step is to recognize it the first step is to recognize that self-talk what is keeping me stuck in this place that i'm in what are the words that are going into my house uh, in my head sorry uh, you might even be hearing me say that and say, yeah, but yeah, but you don't know my situation is different. I, I got to tell you that that's not going to help you get anywhere. So stop thinking of, of the words and, and the thoughts going in your head as just, they're just there. You're controlling them. A lot of times you're addicted to those feelings of self pity, self hate, you know, playing the violin and everything. A lot of people are addicted to that. I was addicted to that. It's just a story. And you got to start thinking of your stories as, is it keeping me where I am? Is it keeping me enslaved? Is it serving me? Is that story serving me? It might even be true. It might even be a true story. The true story is I didn't graduate high school, so I, I don't even have my GED and I can't find a good job. That might be true. But is that story serving you? So start telling yourself a new story. You'll realize and you'll, you'll learn over time, training your mind, training your brain every single day. That if you start telling yourself new stories, your actions start to reflect that. All of a sudden, your life looks a lot more hopeful. All of a sudden, you're, you're, you start looking up and saying, wow, there's more opportunity than I thought. There is no one on earth who is responsible for the money that is in your pocket. Only you. 
If you go out there right now to, to, I don't know, Sam's Club or one of these wholesale places, get a whole case full of water and go somewhere where they need water and it's really hot. It's a basketball game outside or something in the summertime. Everybody's sweating. Go sell the water for $3 a bottle. You sell it for more than what you bought it for. I'm not telling you to do that specifically, but there's an idea. You're thinking abundance. You're thinking opportunity. You're telling yourself a new story. You're going from I can't and I don't know how to, hey, there's possibility out here. What can I do? Start switching your words around to I can't do that to how can I do that? Or I don't know how to I don't know how yet. Just slightly tweaking some of these words to where they're still true. You're not lying to yourself. Don't lie to your brain. Your brain's very smart. But if you tweak it just a little bit, you're still telling the truth to yourself, but you're telling the truth to yourself in a much more positive, progressive, and hopeful way. Where now your whole life opens up to you. So when I came home in 2019, I read another book called Get Rich Click. Okay, because I knew with being on parole with not having a whole lot of options as far as having felonies, no college degrees and whatever. There's so many, there's so many jobs I could get. I started a job as a forklift operator. So there wasn't really a whole lot of opportunity there, but I promise you going every single day to this forklift operator job was killing me spiritually, mentally. I knew that that I already decided that's not what I wanted to do with my life. So it was like every day that I would punch in and I would like, Hey, I'm here. That that feeling of sinking in my stomach where it's like, oh, I'm in the rat race, the nine to five grind, because I was already out of it here before my body was completely released from that prison, right? And that's what I'm telling you. First, the first shift has to happen here. If you're totally okay with your job, it's totally fine. You're totally okay with your life. Okay, I'm not, I'm not speaking to that and I'm not speaking to you necessarily. But if you're sick of it, be really sick of it. Tell yourself in your mind, this is just a stepping stone. This is just um, something to get me from to, from here to the next place in my life. Because I don't want to do this forever. I hate this. <laughs> you got to be really sick and tired of being sick and tired. And tell yourself, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to be. Period. Don't tell yourself you'll try. Don't tell yourself, maybe I'll give it a shot. Tell yourself, I'm going to be at this other place. That's another key to this whole thing is I was certain. Okay, uh, you cannot be uncertain about this thing. I knew one thing and one thing only. As I was looking at affiliate marketing, and that was my pathway out, I realized, hey, with parole and everything, affiliate this affiliate marketing thing seems like a perfect idea because you don't need a degree. You don't need a permit. You don't even need products. You don't need anything. Okay, I just go online and promote other people's stuff. And that's my pathway to get out of this job. But what I knew for a fact beyond everything was that it was going to work, period. It was going to work. Maybe I'll fall flat on my face. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'll look stupid. Maybe I'll make a bunch of YouTube videos and you can see like early on in this channel, I didn't know what I was doing. My head was spinning. I was looking this way and that way and just talking anything. I didn't know anything. But what I did know was this has to work and it's going to work. I'm going to make it work. That certainty, when you're that certain, the universe reaches back out to you and says, okay, let's do it then. When you're, when you're kind of putting your toe in the water and trying a little bit and dabbling here and there, well, I'll give it a little try. And if, if it's uncomfortable, if I don't quite like it, I'm just going to run back in the other direction, go back to my safe life and never have that breakthrough that I'm looking for. And I knew that for a fact. I knew that there was only two options. It's going to work or I'm going back to jail eventually. But I already chose no, no going back to jail, right? I was done. That was it. I chose my path in life. I burned all the boats. There was no going back. And yes, for the first seven months trying this affiliate marketing stuff, good God, I was horrible. I didn't make any money. All those stories online where you see gurus and they're like all on a boat now and they're making millions of dollars and throwing money everywhere and they're on a private plane and it seems like they got rich overnight and it was super fast. That is not my story, okay? I don't know if they're trying to cover up and just show you only the highlights and nothing else. I'm going to show you if you go back to this channel long enough and I'm telling you right now, 
That is not how it was. That is not my story. And mind you, I'm not some super eight-figure guru or anything yet, but I will be because that's part of the plan, right? That's what I'm going to do. But the point is, from the beginning, I knew it was going to work, and I fell a lot. I see far too many people starting in affiliate marketing, and there's a lot of reasons they fail. <laughs> a lot. One of them being they get the wrong direction. They don't know what they're doing, and they're being told to go this way and that way, and this, this industry chews you up and spits you back out. A lot of these other programs and gurus just take you for your money. I'm just being honest. I hate throwing stones. I hate putting people under the bus. But I've been through a lot of programs myself and I stepped back and I said, they just take you for your money. They just promise you the world, they take your money and they leave you high and dry. That being said, I made those mistakes. I bought a lot of stupid stuff when I first started. I bought anything. If it sounded good, I bought it because I was certain it's going to work. Eventually, eventually, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out what's a scam, what's real what's good what's bad but i was willing to make all the mistakes i possibly could and now through all the ups and downs and now as much as i've been through in this whole affiliate marketing thing and at one point my dream in life was to make ten thousand a month and that's it i just wanted to sit back and relax and do ten thousand a month and now i'm consistently making over thirty thousand a month and at the end of the day it's just money it really is i really i stopped caring about the money part a long time ago i'm comfortable i'm fine and now I really just care about you guys. I care about my private clients and my program that I work with every day of the affiliate franchise. I care about you guys, the YouTube subscribers who are looking for guidance and you're just starting your journey and you're just trying to figure out who's legit, who's not, uh, what's right, what's wrong. I don't know where to start. I don't know what niche to pick. I don't know what, I get it. I've been there, I've done that. And I remember that feeling. I remember feeling like I was lost. I remember feeling like, why can't someone just tell me what to do? I get it, but I can promise you this. If you click the link down below and you sign up for a call with myself or somebody from my staff, if you choose to join us, great. That's fantastic. And I'm, I'm with you. I'm, we're on our way to the top. Okay, together. We'll be working on it. If not, that's okay. It's okay. We're going to make sure you get clarity on your plans. We're going to make sure you know which direction you want to go. And that's it. But I hope that my story helps somebody today somebody at a crossroads in their life somebody who's feeling inadequate unsure wants to try something new but they just don't know where to go what to do and they have all these false beliefs about themselves they have all these false beliefs about their capabilities you are capable of anything i promise you that if i could do this and by this i don't just mean affiliate marketing i just mean life success doing things beyond what you're expected to do if i could do it anybody could do it you can do it i hope that helped i'm the infamous joel and i'm out